because they're following the same path that once took Japan to the worldwide level. Thus, we are entering the era of cheap oil, when the prices will always be low and should go down in the future. I want to shout out that it's impossible, but so far, the printing press has been doing an excellent job. Glad to welcome you to the CoinPost channel. Lately, we've talked a lot about the crisis, because it's essential from the point of view that you should be prepared for it. But in the history of humanity, there were many crises. They all finished, and in the end, some countries looked like the ashes, while others flourished, maximizing the benefit from the situation. Therefore, today, I'd like to talk about what's gonna happen after the crisis, and I'm gonna give you three countries that, in my opinion, could benefit. I wanna thank everyone who is always with us, and welcome everyone who is new here. Subscribe and turn on the notifications, please. Let's begin. China was the first country to face coronavirus, the first to have quarantine, and the first to lift the measures and restore its economy. The situation is no better today, because there must be the reason that, for the first time in history, they decided not to disclose the GDP forecast for 2020. Moreover, citizens are literally handed out gift certificates for purchases, because after the quarantine there's a drop in consumer activity. People don't have money, or they suddenly remembered that wasting money is terrible and saving is good. There are other reasons for this scenario, and for the economy, they could have extremely negative consequences. I gave the details in a separate video, I'll leave the link in the description box and annotation. But I still consider China one of the frontrunners to benefit from the current crisis, because they have substantial industrial potential, and China is called the factory of the world for a reason. They also have a fairly centralized economy. Adding these together, one can predict that no matter how hard it is for the Chinese industry, it's gonna keep working. And after the world gets back to normal and demand goes up again, China will be ready to enter new markets free from competitors. By these markets, I mean countries where the crisis gets the industry. What are they going to be? I think each of our viewers, and I'm aware that the audience is quite international, could answer this question. After they analyze the situation in which the enterprises are in their country and what kind of support a state provides to them to maintain production, based on this data, you can easily predict how much more Chinese products will appear on the shelves of your stores in return for those produced domestically. Why am I betting on China? Because they're following the same path that once took Japan to the worldwide level. They buy up raw materials, technology and highly qualified personnel and in return, they sell the finished product with high added value. And given the relatively cheap labor in China, their finished product has a competitive price on the global market. Therefore, after the end of the current crisis, China has every chance of becoming an even more significant factor for the whole world. And I'm moving on to the next frontrunner of the 2020 crisis. In the role of the second winner in the 2020 crisis, I put Saudi Arabia, and here's why. Their main asset is oil, but more importantly, their deposits have the lowest production cost. That is, the Saudis can sell their oil cheaper than any other country in the world. As a result of the artificial freezing of the economy, the black gold market experienced a new collapse. The cost of the Brent benchmark fell below $20 per barrel, and at some point, oil prices even plummeted into negative zone, which marked a historic event for commodity markets. All of these are the consequences of a sharp drop in demand, and it's not only about gas and aviation fuel. After all, a decent part of the oil market is consumed by the chemical industry, but the demand for those products also dropped. The oil price returned to $40 per barrel as a result of a record decline in production. But this rally completely stopped, because they needed more time to restore demand. Due to forecasts, we're going to return to the pre-crisis consumption level before 2021, and it's the most optimistic one. You can already see its consequences, since the first bankruptcy cases occurred in the United States, and by the end of the year, more than 100 closed companies specializing in shale oil are expected. Britain's leading oil producer, British Petroleum, is preparing to write off at least $13 billion from the value of its asset and lay off up to 14% of its employees. And in Venezuela, 
which has vast oil reserves, there is only one drilling rig left. I must say that Venezuela has issues with oil productions due to US sanctions. Nevertheless, the country is no longer some kind of player in this market. It's expected that in 2021, as demand recovers, the price of black gold might increase. But some factors suggest the opposite and expensive oil at $100 or even $80 per barrel may not ever be there. The fact is that the whole world moves towards green energy. The trend of transition to electric engines is here. Hello, Elon Musk. And even more, countries, mind you, countries, and not just the people, are thinking about the environment. So they announce a crusade against plastic and bottles. And the most crucial thing is shale oil. Although its producers have to survive a series of massive bankruptcies in 2020, in 2021, as soon as the price goes up at least a little higher, they could immediately return to the market and thereby negate all efforts to create artificial scarcity. It's a peculiarity of shale oil production technology. It's relatively cheap and quick to preserve and then return to work at the right time. It doesn't work that way with conventional oil or gas rigs. To reduce oil production, it's cheaper to continue pumping and just burn the obtained raw materials than trying to close the oil well. Thus, we are entering the era of cheap oil, when the prices will always be low and should go down in the future, as humanity gives it up. Only those who have the lowest production cost could survive this, and it is Saudi Arabia. Its expansion policy is pretty aggressive, offering a considerable discount and the ability to pay for goods with a three months delay. In the future, Saudi Arabia could become a major player in the oil market. So, we still have one more country that can take advantage of the 2020 crisis. Support us by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. And our third frontrunner is the United States. I'm aware that the printing press is working at full capacity, that the state debt is almost 26 trillion, and only the laziest critic didn't predict the American dollar collapse. You can also find a video on the channel on how the dollar can lose its leading position as a global reserve currency. I'll leave the link in the description box and the annotation. But what's important, Peter Schiff, Robert Kiyosaki, Ray Dalio and everyone else don't say any deadlines when they talk about the imminent collapse of the US economy. Do you know why? You can resent this wild monetary policy of the United States as much as you like. But it's worked so far and keeps doing so. We cannot deny the scenario that in 30 or 40 years we won't be sitting on a bench in old age discussing the dollar collapse because the public debt would already hit 200 or 500 trillion dollar mark. Frankly, I find it hard to understand how the stock market can be so cut off from the real economic situation. I want to shout out that it's impossible, but so far the printing press has been doing an excellent job. And if we turn to history, then the last crises would begin in the USA, but in the end America always feels better than other countries. Because the problem is solved by printing new dollars, and whoever has a printing press is the winner. You can resent this order of things as much as you like, but it would be foolish to deny a scenario in which, according to the results of the 2020 crisis, the United States could again trick the whole world with the dollar and remain the top one global economy. It's a harsh reality of life. Share this video so that your friends and relatives stay informed. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. It's the CoinPost channel. Subscribe and get enlightened.